A positive day for the equity market yesterday, the NSE 20 closing up almost half a percent. What did you take of this, uh, re this return to a risk taking on the equity front? Well, uh, it's quite uh, interesting because what we've seen is uh, a lot of um, uh, foreign uh, participation pushing up uh, the, the NSE performance. And uh, they're, they're, they're taking advantage of one, uh, an, an appreciating Kenya shilling, and at the same time, they're taking advantage of uh, cheap stocks, undervalued stocks, which, which then uh, yields two sources of return in terms of uh, currency return and in terms of uh, the return on their investments. So one might say some bargain hunting uh, in the market. Of course, we know that the equity market is some 24% down for the year. Let's look at some of the uh, movers on the day. Ati River Mining coming out with news saying that they, as a result of the shilling appreciating from around 100 to 94, uh, they've managed to reverse 288 million shillings from an earlier forex loss of, of over or almost 700 million shillings. This is good news for the company given that its bottom line uh, was really impacted by that uh, provision there. Uh, how do you expect shareholders to respond to this news? Well, of course, uh, positively, because uh, uh, of the, uh, the exposure in foreign currency, the debt, uh, they recorded the, the foreign exchange loss. But uh, as the shilling continues to appreciate, then, of course, that will impact, one, on their uh, operational costs. And two, in the terms of their servicing of their foreign debt obligation. So shareholders will be quite happy with this news. East African Portland Cement also uh, taking some strides in order to reduce its exposure to its yen, uh, to the yen, given the, the appreciation we've seen for the yen. They have moved half of their debt into a dollars. Uh, do you think this is a wise move also? Uh, also the fact that they've converted into dollars that they, they see the dollar uh, to they see the dollar not strengthening as much as the yen i think it's a wise move because um uh, the swap into the currency swap into dollar uh, in my view the dollar is more predictable they'll be able to uh, uh, forecast uh, the movement of the dollar and uh, also exhibits a little more stability so I think uh, it's a favorable move for them in terms of uh, servicing their debt obligations going forward. In the cement sector, um, East African Portland has been falling back whilst the likes of Ati River Mining has been managing to claw market share away from the, uh, the top two cement makers. Uh, which stocks are your favorite in that sector? Uh, well, of course, uh, Three River Mining, and uh, uh, I can include Bamburi into that uh, spectrum. Uh, East Africa and Portland is still, of course, suffering from the uh, what what we call uh, a, lo a lot of uh, high participation by government, and uh, that sort of slows down its decision-making processes. And we've also seen a lot of. Uh, management changes, uh, board, board changes, which have also impacted on its uh, uh, strategies. Uh, at River Mining, of course, has been taking advantage of uh, the situation and uh, aggressively marketing its products and opening up various revenue streams, not only cement, but fertilizer and chemicals and uh, expanding within the region. And uh, Bamburi, of course, has also been uh, quite resilient, especially from uh, great support from uh, the from Lafarge. Uh, let's go back to the currency and firms that have had uh, foreign currency losses, Kenjane and KPLC, two of those. They'll also benefit from uh, the appreciation in the shilling. We're having debate yesterday over whether you choose Kenjane or KPLC. At this point in time, uh, the market commentator saying KPLC is the defensive stock given it's able to pass on a high electricity cost to consumers. As fuel prices go up, so does electricity. Are you of that opinion? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh, if you look at our uh, power bills, you'll always find there's, the, the, there's always a component that reflects uh, the foreign exchange uh, 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 fluctuations and also the fuel uh, uh, costs. So they are able to pass that down to the consumer, so that won't hit them. Uh, but at the same time, KPLC is uh, gaining from uh, the restructuring of their balance sheet where now they're, they're able to absorb uh, uh, the financing from, uh, from uh, donors, uh, fr sorry, from development partners at, at, at very uh, cost-efficient rates. 
So KPLC uh, current market fundament fundamentals uh, earnings multiple of 5.6. I think KPLC is quite a strong buy. More attractive than Kenjen, which is down some 44% this year. Yes. Uh, let's just uh, move on to CMC. Uh, trade on the stock has been suspended given the ousted chairman has uh, ongoing fraud allegations and investigations into that. Uh, he's, of course, the uh, Peter Matoka, who's the largest single shareholder in CMC. Uh, the, the courts have now ruled against an extraordinary general meeting uh, where he hoped to replace some board members. What do you make of, of all the drama that's unfolded at CMC? Well, uh, as CMC just has, is experiencing a lot of problems because um, um, while uh, fraud allegations and uh, fraud allegations are coming up at this point in time, I mean, the comp uh, Andy Ford has, has been doing business with CMC for the past 17 years. No one has ever raised an eyebrow. But what is coming out clearly is just uh, corporate governance issues where uh, there, there are conflicts of interest. Uh, the board members have been aware, they've not addressed it, but I think it's just a point in time where uh, certain parties want to flex their muscles just to show who's stronger of them uh, of, of either side. But at the same time, uh, it's a situation whereby uh, you, can't, you can't really tell which, which, which side uh, is uh, telling the truth until probably uh, the for forensic uh, audit report uh, comes out. Yeah. But uh, CMC uh, has problems both internally and externally because also market share problems uh, they, they'll be experiencing. Yeah, and a lot, as you say, a lot of mudslinging there. Very quickly, the market, as I said, 24% down in the red. It uh, had a positive run yesterday. What is your outlook for a close of the NSE in 2011? Do you expect us to have a positive run into Christmas? Uh, mainly on the back of uh, undervalued stocks, uh, we'll see uh, continued foreign participation. As you know, that uh, that has been a big factor in uh, the turnaround of the NSE. But uh, minimal activity. I mean, uh, going into the festive season, uh, we expect uh, minimal activity on that front.